Hey guys, hey, welcome everybody. back to Yolitics. You do it every time. Not we, we you. We're, we're at a great place. This is Oak Island's Brewery. It it's, is. It's uh, in Dallas. Northeast Dallas, mm -hmm. uh, on the edge of Garland, and we are with. Yeah, and don't let 635 scare you off. You can still get here. 635. It's I, exactly. Forever under construction, but I see progress there. That's great. You can get here. It's no problem. <laughs> How many memes will there be about text dot and, and 35 and 635 and working on yourself and stuff like that? Well, I mean, and if you're listening in Houston, you know, 610, 45, 59, you know, 69, I guess now it is. Just take your pick. Austin, yeah, same thing. Terrible. 35. I just got done with that not long ago. It was not fun. We, we are uh, with one of my favorite people anywhere. We're <laughs> in rare air. We, we this very called. rare air. And it, and it took months to book this. We, we tried to do this months ago. Because she's so busy. We, we couldn't yeah. even she was it. on the Amalfi Coast yeah. and then doing some other things. Before and, we started, yeah. she's talking about being on the Amalfi Coast. Yeah. And, oh, this one time I was on the Amalfi Coast, the private jet. I lost my sunglasses. Yeah, it's the prettiest place in the world. <laughs> we, we are with uh, Rebecca Lopez, WFAA's senior crime and justice reporter uh, in DFW. Um, yeah. Arlo, it's good to see you. Thank you. It's great well, it's to have you. Uh, fun being with you guys. Yeah. We've had you before on yeah. with us, but it's been forever. It has been a while. We need to talk to your agent about, you know, getting you on more often. You get, can get with hard. my people anytime. <laughs> I'm sure they can fit y'all in. What, what are you sipping there? What, yeah, what are we drinking here, Rebecca? This is a combination of lemonade and beer. And it's actually really tasty. It's lemonade and beer. And yeah. they, they mm -hmm. do the combination. You they do, do the combination. They do the combination. Yeah. yeah. And Wheeler, yours says Jack Daniels. So <laughs> what do you have? Uh, this this is their specialty here, which is known as the Freaky Deaky. That, and that's a, that, yeah, that's a popular beer. It's a strong beer, too. It is. It's a 10% alcohol by volume. Don't put your glasses on. Yeah. I can read yeah. it from here. And also... 10% alcohol by volume. It is. Yeah. So I'm going to pace Ooh. myself, though. You're off the rest of the day. But I will right? say that I'm interested in this one because they've got this whole menu here uh, at Oak Highlands. And, you know, they, they have the names of each one. And then they have, like, little... Uh, drawings next to each one. There's a golden mustache. It's got a little mustache, obviously. There's one that has like a traffic cone next to it. I don't know why. And what does yours have? Mine has handcuffs. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I was drawn to it and uh, yeah. And I'm having the all good. It is the lighter beer on the menu. One of the lighter beers on the menu too. Okay, it's pace a, yourself a, then. The Kolsch style lager. You know what we're talking about today? I, I don't. <laughs> the, uh, so this is uh, starting like did every other this, podcast. Did you book we this do. podcast? Uh, I'm going to say the the long name here. Uh, we're talking about perfluoroalkyl alkalil substances and polyfluoroalkyl substances, okay. also known as, what do you call them? People are turning this off right now. No, 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 <laughs> it's not a science it. podcast. Don't right? turn it off because let me tell you what, this affects you, it is already Everyone. in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what do you call this them? Is, this is what, what's PFAS. the short? PFAS. What? PFAS. PFAS. PFAS, I think it's PFAS. I think it's PFAS. 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 Whatever, PFAS. It sounds well, like we a can, test. We're Texans, so we can say PFAS, PFAS Yeah, it sounds like a test that you take in school, the PFAS. The PFAS, Which will determine something later on. <laughs> but this is actually bad stuff, known as yeah. forever chemicals. And Rebecca, you just did this fascinating investigation into this uh, in in one part of the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Just start multiplying that out because this is happening nationwide, yeah. actually. But you really zeroed in on the problem here, uh, and it's fascinating what is happening with this. But you know, for anyone out there, you don't have to be out on one of these farms or ranches where you went. You've got these in your bloodstream. Absolutely. Because, uh, what is it, 97% of us have PFAS in yes. us? Yes, so PFAS, is, if you go back, it actually started during the Manhattan Project. And they Jeez. created these chemicals that they put on military vehicles. And eventually, companies, uh, other companies, decided that it would be great to put these um, on Teflon pans in, in pr pretty much everything. It's in cardboard. It is in our makeup. Pizza it boxes. Is Carpets. Pizza, carpet. Every, yeah, grease, just about everything grease has. Grease resistant paper that your fast food might be wrapped mm, in. Exactly. So we now all have PFOS in us and they are carcinogenic in high levels. And so, and they're there's where you know the problem is and we can explain more like what happened yeah. in Johnson County and, and let's kind of back into this because it's, it's kind of a complicated story but it's got a lot of people talking there's a lawsuit going on there's a criminal investigation going on farmers and ranchers fertilize their land right I mean if you've ever had a garden mm -hmm. you use cow manure maybe as fertilizer chicken it's manure rich in yeah it's really chicken good manure. chicken manure is how amazing. big is a wow. pile of chicken manure Wheeler? it's <laughs> dr. Wheeler well it's ahead. not big but you buy it in a bag and it's been you know cleaned up or whatever you know something's been done to it but organic <laughs> I'm telling you organic chicken manure. what's been done to chicken manure Wheeler? <laughs> well you know they've got to make it to where you're not just shoveling 
But there's a lot know. of chickens, I guess, yeah, going into that bag of manure. Well, chickens make a lot. Yeah. Uh, that's the we thing with them. We chickens where I grew up in West and Texas. And I'll tell you so. what, it Let's makes see. things grow like crazy. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Let's get back on track here, all right? So, <laughs> But, you know, we're talking about fertilizer. That, that you know, it works. It does its thing. And you have to put that so, onto a field to sure. make things grow. And, you know, you know who else makes a lot? We do. Yeah. And so, so and yeah, a lot so of people don't realize that human waste, human excrement is used in fertilizer now. And people I, are grossed out of that right now. In yeah. Johnson County, so where, where you did this story recently for WFAA, Johnson County, just south of Fort Worth, uh, ranchers are saying that, that fertilizer on neighboring property mm -hmm. um, is, is killing their horses. It's, it's, there's runoff. And their cows and their that fish. It's moving that PFAS. You're right. And moving those forever chemicals onto their property, killing their, their ponds of fish, uh, et cetera. Uh, the fertilizers on the neighboring farmland, as you reported, uh, and as Wheeler so eloquently said, it's made from biosolids, which right. is human excrement. Um, and it's you traced it back to the city of Fort Worth wastewater treatment. Correct. Let's zoom out just for a second. That's not the only one selling this. I've done stories years ago mm -hmm. in the city of Dallas. They have their own wastewater treatment. Right. Right. I remember they gave me a jar of biosolids, several yeah. jars of biosolids. They had press conferences and they gave those out. I had they them on did. my desk for the longest time next to you. They gave it jars. back to you. I should have given it to Wheeler and put it on his <laughs> desk, but that didn't work out. So I'm curious how this story came about because this is not necessarily a new practice. Right. So, how did it come about? So here's what happened. So Dana Ames is a... Uh, she works with the county constables out in Johnson County, and she got a call from some ranchers and farmers out there that said, oh, it stinks out here, it smells, and my cows and my fish and my livestock, they're dying. Hmm. Can you help us investigate? So she didn't know anything about any of this. She went out there, and there were piles and piles of biosolids they were smoking manure they also call it, was it smoking? sewage sludge you could kind of see smoke coming out of it and so the company that sells this uh, tells the farmers it's all good it's organic and they help them actually spread it onto their land the company that sells the biosolids yes but what's happened is that sometimes biosolids because again remember we have PFOS in us when all of our poop from everywhere goes to the wastewater treatment plant, they separate the solids from the liquids. Mm -hmm. That solid then is used to create the biosolid fertilizer, but it's in high concentrations of PFOS because now they've put all of our stuff, yeah. you know, poop in, you know, the fertilizer. Right. And then they use the fertilizer and they spread it. In, in other parts of the country as well, ranchers have had to abandon their farms. And so what happened was- Walk away from their farms. They walked I mean, away, abandoned their farms. Because this is now in the soil. And the state of Maine has actually banned biosolids altogether. And mm. so what has happened in Johnson County is one rancher spread it, but it spreads pretty quickly. It gets into so deep into the soil that it actually gets into the well water. Think about how deep the wells are. Wow. They found it in the well water. They use the well water to water their their land and also to use for their livestock. And so horses and cows and ponds and ponds of fish started dying in neighboring ranches. So they tested it. It was a TCEQ approved lab that tested it and they found biosolids. Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. Correct. The state agency, yeah. And which they, regulates. Which regulates yeah. and they found the biosolid or the uh, high levels of PFOS in every single one of the animals. And there's nowhere else that it could have come from because it's out in rural community. They yeah, so they look concentration, through, I guess. Too. And they yeah. look through the tissues of these yeah. dead animals mm -hmm. and they're finding it over and over again in, in every one of these samples of these dead animals. Uh, and, and as you say, you know, these animals aren't putting on makeup or no. eating out of pizza boxes right. or off of, you know, Walking grease, grease resistant paper. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, th that had to come from somewhere and it just turns out that it it's in us and it comes out of us and then, you know, if that's put somewhere, then there it is. Yeah, and it's in those high concentrations. And here's, so they call them forever chemicals because they're there forever. They don't, you can't get rid of them. They don't break down. You, no, they don't break down. And so a thousand years from now, it will still be there. So their land is not usable anymore. They cannot 
ranch and but one of the ranchers th was thinking he was going to have to euthanize all of his cattle i think over a hundred heads of cattle and you have to you cannot use that land anymore and so one of the uh, county commissioners they had a big presentation which we went and filmed uh to the county commissioners and they were so outrage they were shocked one county commissioner said this is like chernobyl you almost need a super fund to come in and clean this off the land because there's no way to get it out i would imagine this is a very you know just because of where we're talking about a very conservative commissioner very court. conservative commissioner's court okay. absolutely read republican there yeah uh, my question then is since there is you know across the board republican control here in this state and has been for decades now what is their message now to state leadership uh, about this problem and are they getting anywhere and that's what they're saying we need help where are you now where is the epa where is tceq can you come help us because we're losing our land and our cattle and and we're helpless out here so they do now at this case want some state regulation or somebody to come in and they said, well, if the state's not gonna step in, maybe we as county commissioners are gonna have to regulate it ourselves. Because we can say here that it's important that, you know, uh, and I think it's important to note this, you know, just because a company sells this product, you know, it, the company may be totally complying with EPA, TCEQ, all Correct. regulations. It's a, this is a regulation issue, isn't it? Well, so yes, yeah, so the company is following the regulations and the parameters that they have to make this, these biosolids. And they say, hey, look, we're, we meet all standards. We're meeting the EPA and TCEQ standards. But just like back in the day, we used to have lead in our gasoline, we yeah. had asbestos in our paint. Then we realized, you know what? That's a carcinogen. Those are carcinogens and they're killing us. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with PFOS and in some of these biosolids. They are, they're killing our land and they're killing us and they're killing our, our people. And that, that's not to say that the company is intentionally doing it because again, it's regulated and right now they're allowed to do it. Yeah. However, the EPA uh, is taking a look at biosolids and we're thinking I think it's December or later this year where they're going to come out with new regulations mm. and possibly banning it and like mm. I said some states have already taken action and they've banned them off their all farms and and in use and this is interesting too because in some areas of Texas they're actually making it for consumers so you and I could go to the feed store or go to one of the hardware stores and buy it and then put it on our little tomato plants or oh. whatever we are really putting in how our, is it sold it's, it's 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 packaged as environmentally friendly and it's sold in little packages in a bag like, like bio mm -hmm. solids yeah. Or? Mm -hmm. yeah it's fertilizer wow yeah so we haven't directly talked about human excrement on this podcast before i bet we have uh, well <laughs> it direct, just wasn't said quite like that directly talked about human excrement on this <laughs> podcast before but but it's it's something that that scientists study a lot i mean during covid yeah. Uh, you know, there were a lot of people determining which areas had the most COVID that was mm -hmm. going undetected, and they could detect that in, in the uh, wastewater treatment plants. What in the world, though, can county commissioners in Johnson County do to address this? So I think that there's going to be a push for them to get the city of Fort Worth to stop doing business with this particular company that is making the biosolids in Fort Worth. Be and I asked the city of Fort Worth, are you going to sever your ties with this company in light of what you know? And they said, we don't have any plans to do that right mm -hmm. now. So but, I but think that's the just whole one thing, place though. That's I mean, just it, one place because it's everywhere. It's in Wise County. It's it, everywhere. But it's all, I, I, my guess is it's probably nationwide too. Yeah, I can't is. imagine Fort Worth has, has found this revenue stream that they're making all this money off of. Well, yeah. and I also think that, um, so PFOS is actually also being found in high levels in the water uh, drinking water in cities across America. So right. the Biden administration has actually sent down, um, I guess, regulations to say uh, you need to clean up your drinking water. Fort Worth, at one point, I believe they had they were way over the limit of PFOS in the drinking, uh, in water. The drinking water. That this EPA isn't sewage treatment. This right. Is this the is the water actual drink. drinking water yeah, that's, been and yeah. that's been cleaned. And so they, if you go on their website, you'll see and they they talk about it. Fort Worth, they have high levels of PFOS. 
and the Biden and a lot of uh, actually municipalities have it in yeah. their water. The so Biden there's administration. Screen, can you screen it out though? There, yeah, there the, are ways. It, there are ways, but it's extremely expensive. So like your Brita, you can't you know, <laughs> take your Brita and hope that you're going to clean out PFAS out of your water. It's not going to come out. That you have to have special filtration systems, and they're very expensive. And this is what these farmers had to do. Mm. They had to put in special, really wow. expensive filtration systems, water filtration systems, on their property in order to clean it out. So there are, but the there is uh, the Biden administration has said you have to clean your water if you have to go buy more equipment. I think, though, it's an unfunded mandate. So. Well, <laughs> uh, I, I, they did come out so. with this final rule from the Biden administration uh, just last month, uh, basically telling these water systems like you've got, you know, X number of years, I think it's three years mm -hmm. uh, to get this out of your, you know, or get this down to acceptable levels, which is very minute. Uh, they did put aside uh, billions of dollars, actually, for this. I think it was from the Inflation Reduction Act uh, that went into this, or maybe it was infrastructure. Uh, but basically, they've told all of these water systems, including Dallas, mm -hmm. Fort Worth, uh, uh, Harris County, Houston, uh, all of those were listed. There's 49, uh, the Texas Tribune reports, 49 Texas public water utilities have reported surpassing these first ever limits uh, that the EPA has yeah. put on forever chemicals. 49 water systems, and that's not counting all of them because they have a certain amount of time to report to the EPA, and a lot of them haven't reported yet. So it may be wow. much more widespread than that. But you know, that's addressing you know what's happening in our water supply, right. and uh, you know, uh, drinking this stuff in, and hopefully that's going to be uh, remedied. But they you know anticipate there's going to be a lot more money that's going to have to be poured into that because, as you said, it's very expensive to remove this. And they're also now banning some of the companies from using certain forever chemicals now in products and that's also where you have to so start these are I mean, manufacturers it's too, yeah of, of it's carpet, all over the world like sure. it literally every place in the world every human being probably has some level of PFOS if you if you drink out of a water bottle if you whatever you know there's there's PFOS everywhere so it's very difficult task to kind of now try to take it out of everything but they are starting to at least ban them in some and there's thousands some, of these little compounds thousands. yeah and well, so the ones that they think are more dangerous because it causes uh, uh, prostate uh, cancer uh, there's high levels of, of children that are having cancer and in fact a couple of the farmers now they don't know if they can actually link it to hmm. uh, the PFOS uh, that they have found but a couple of their family members have gotten cancer so but we don't well, know there's no there's no scientific you know sure. study that EPA says, says EPA says decreased <laughs> fertility developmental effects yeah. and delays in children, accelerated puberty, increased risk of some cancers, including prostate, kidney, and testicular, reduced ability of the body's immune system to fight infections, interference with natural hormones, mm -hmm. increased cholesterol levels, and or risk of obesity. So you're talking about some nasty stuff here. And when the Biden administration came out with these rules, uh, they said that the, they thought that this would prevent thousands of deaths mm -hmm. and reduce tens of thousands of serious illnesses. So there is an acknowledgement here that while testing is still going on on this stuff to reveal, you know, how dangerous it is, they're, they're, they're coming straight out from the top down here and saying yeah. this stuff is causing deaths and illnesses. Well, and what's interesting is that biosolids are regulated, but once they're spread on the property, no one goes back out there to check, at least that we've been able to find. So these ranchers said uh, until our animals started dying and our fish started dying, no one from any kind of environmental agency came down to take a look at it, to take a look at their land. So yeah, they, so they do, they regulate it, but then no one follows up. And there's only a handful of actual regulators with TCEQ that sure. can't even go across the state to look at all this stuff. And they have to do a, a lot of other things yeah. all over the place. Uh, how did these ranchers originally link what was going on in the neighbor's property to what was happening on their property? Well, it wasn't until Detective Ames went out there the constable and, yeah, and, constable and started testing they're like well why are they dying so then they sent all of these uh animals um some of the the uh, carcasses yeah, yeah. And to uh, texas a and m i believe and they they're the ones that started studying they're like well there's pfos well where's this coming from and mm -hmm. then they said well let's you know start testing some of the things around and then they realized it's got to be coming from the biosolids and the fertilizer that was on the neighboring land and, and what did the ranchers want right now because there are some that you mentioned that can't use their land in other places what do these ranchers want to happen now. Well, they want to be compensated for their cattle. Um, the They filed, I think there's four of them that have filed a lawsuit against- Four ranchers or, uh -huh, or four property owners. Uh -huh, against the uh, company that, that made 
makes the biosolids. Mm-hmm. And they they said, you know, we just really want to be compensated for our land and can the they loss. use it anymore? Can no, you can't use it anymore they for can't your use livestock. That land. No, not really. Mm-mm. And in fact, there's a movie that I would recommend every person watch um, mm-hmm. that's based on a real story. It's called Dark Waters yep. with Mark Ruffalo, uh, the, the Hulk. Have you seen this, Wheeler? Mm-hmm. I have. It's, It'll, it'll, it'll really make you nervous because you realize how easily this this is getting into our food and into our water. We don't and question cons- it. Yes, yeah. we don't question yeah. it. And and this this happened decade, more than a decade or wow. decade and a half ago. Yeah. So, so the, the ranchers want to be compensated. This is, uh, you know, in courts as well. But you reported as well, there's a criminal investigation by Detective Ames, mm-hmm. uh, a constable in Johnson County. What in the world might be criminal? Because the the company that's doing this, Cinegro, said, hey, listen, we're just following the rules that are out there today. I think the question is, when, what did they know and when did they know it? Do they know that this product can be dangerous in high levels and has high levels of PFAS in, in the biosolids? And if you knew that and still allowed it to be spread, there lies the criminal aspect of this. But, but they're not, based on your reporting, Cinegro, which which is selling this biosolids that it's getting from the, the, the city of Fort Worth, is doing everything by the book, right? Yes, but they have been sued in the past when they have found other high levels of PFOS in the biosolids in other states. Uh, and so, according to Detective Ames, they know, they should know that the biosolids in some levels can have PFOS that can be dangerous to animals. And I think that that's where they're trying to And it's to ongoing, approach. this it's investigation's ongoing. ongoing? Yeah, it's ongoing. The investigation's still going and on. What are, what are, you mentioned about ranchers wanting this stuff. Have you spoken to any Texas lawmakers at all about this yet? No, but there were several at this county commissioner's meeting and they were very concerned that's, as well, yeah. thinking that maybe we do, they need, they do need to step in and start regulating. Have any states outlawed uh, yeah, the, the just, sell of biosolids? Just Maine. Maine's only Maine, the only one Maine that, that I okay. can think of right now that wow. because they had serious problems where again, ranchers had to abandon their properties and, and, and kill all of their livestock. They actually had to put them down. Okay, so I, I, a couple of little threads here. I can imagine that this is one of the few things these days that Democrats, Republicans, <laughs> Libertarians, wherever you are yeah. on that spectrum can agree that, wow, this sounds uniquely horrible, that, you know, something that's in our bodies that we are, you know, sending back out uh, is getting into fields and it's actually killing animals. So that's unsettling to begin with, but maybe we need to do more to regulate this. I would imagine that that's a, a, a pretty common yeah. thought, well, when no you, matter your political persuasion. Right, when you think of the county commissioners in Johnson County, which is very red, yeah. Texas, and then you have the Biden administration saying the same thing, they actually agree, we need more EPA regulations, we need more TCEQ uh, to come in and do something. And I've honestly have never seen that where there would be some sort of bipartisan support on helping clean up our environment. Or people in these extremely red counties, these rural yeah. red Texas counties <laughs> saying, hey, we need more regulation. Yeah, yeah that's, yes. that, that's, that's unusual to see. Uh, and, and it does make you think that maybe this develops some kind of critical mass, though, to get the help to, to push that forward. Because, you know, again, you know, you look at Republican control in this state, it's unified, it's across the board mm-hmm. and has been for decades. And do you know why? Every election night, you see a couple of spots of blue around the major urban uh, centers, but then you see this sea of red that goes all the way out to, you know, yeah. through West Texas and, and, and through you know, much of East Texas. And all of those counties go Republican every time and by huge margins. And if you're in one of these counties that goes red by huge margins every time, and they're saying, hey guys, uh, we need you here, and you've got lawmakers sitting in on commissioner's court meetings, that sounds like you've got the ingredients sure. for some kind of change. Yeah, here. they definitely want the governor and others to take a hard look at what is happening to these ranchers that are very strong supporters of, of the governor and and of you know Republican candidates, absolutely. And one of the things also that I need to mention is that the rancher who spread the biosolids, he it's it's really cheap to buy. Yeah. And so they so you That's they the sell hook, it as it? as cheap and it is a lot cheaper. Uh, and so they see that farmer and the farmers that are spreading it just as big of victims as the ones that whose cattle are dying and their w- water is um, contaminated because they said 
they thought that they were doing a good thing. They didn't realize it might be dangerous. And so they're just every bit of victim as the other people. Right. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I mean, I, I, I could trace this all the way back though to the person who manufactures my frying pan yeah. or the person who manufactures my carpet. There are lawsuits against uh, DuPont and others. They are the ones that are really at the forefront of the uh, uh, PFOS controversy. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we actually reached out to them and they say that you know everything is safe and uh, and that they are you know basically doing nothing wrong. You're but they are there are major lawsuits from the city of Dallas, I believe, yeah. is suing DuPont and some of the other manufacturers. Were there big settlements PFOS. that were offered and, and the cities been, were like, no thanks, we'll yeah. pursue this. Keep going, huh? Yeah. Um, this story first aired on WFAA Dallas Fort Worth uh, on April 29th. And broke the internet. It, it did yeah. break the internet. For days, it was the number one story on WFAA.com, which is the most visited news website in North Texas. So I should tell you kind of where this ranks. It and, was, it was and, and this huge. is on a subject that when we started off and I said the name of these things, you went, uh oh, everybody just turned this off. I hope so, someone's still watching at this yeah. point. So, but, yes. but, but that's the thing though. It's it's not sexy. It does sound totally uninteresting. Sure. You know, when you talk about perfluoroalkyl <laughs> yeah, substances exactly. and polyfluoroalkyl <laughs> substances, PFAS, you think, oh boy, everybody's going to tune out. Nobody's going to read this, whatever. No. Uh, I mean, the numbers, because you know we can see the metrics yeah, on this story. Yeah. The Huge. numbers were shocking. Yeah. I mean, this is a t at a so, time in, in North Texas when you've got the Dallas Stars in the hockey playoffs doing very well, the Dallas Mavericks in the basketball playoffs doing very well. <laughs> and this story was just yeah. just trouncing yeah. everything else yeah. and severe weather. We had all these things and this story was just trouncing well, I think all of them. Because we all, at the end of the day, we want to be healthier. We want to know that our drinking water is safe yeah. and that we are, and that, that our somebody food is, is safe. And our food is safe. And, and somebody these cows is that we eat are safe. And, us. So, uh, so, you know, now, since I know this, I used to get the uh, to-go stuff uh, oh, yeah. in plastic, and I, Jason and I were talking about this at the microwave. I, and I would just stick it in this. there and microwave. I'm oh, like, oh Rebecca, no. no! Now I take it and I put it in glass in order to, you know, heat it up because when you're nuking the plastic, though, that's that yeah. those that's that's forever chemicals. And you now, still got some PFAS in yeah, there, you but do. you're not going to get as many. I, I slapped your hand, but I, I was you like, did, you're doing what? Like, Don't do that. And now, honestly, I think I'd rather drink beer than drinking water. <laughs> honestly, I really am because I uh, I went to Topa Chico because this, this, this story made me so concerned about our drinking water because we know it is in drinking water PFAS in municipalities. Yeah. So it's almost like you have to change your whole way of of what you eat and drink. So you're but only drinking Topo Chico now when you're out on the Topo Chico uh, on the Amalfi Coast <laughs> these days. Or yeah. mineral water. I shouldn't be endorsing anybody, but yeah, mineral water. <laughs> Let me tell you a story about Rebecca Lopez. So we sat to, we sat next to each other for what 10, 12 years or so uh, in the WFA until newsroom. she got her way and got Jason, separated he was like, from yeah. you. And, and Rebecca. I'm going to front you out with a story, Rebecca. <laughs> oh, Lord. Rebecca's I, know high maintenance. I know exactly what he's Re going to talk Rebecca about. Rebecca went to the microwave one day. <laughs> And she heated up some store-bought tacos <laughs> like from Tom Thumb. I'm like, he, are you kidding? He took me? away my Latina card. <laughs> I, I, we revoked it at that moment. We revoked it because it was it was unbelievable. But, but Jace uh, is pretty much uh, Latino. <laughs> he, uh, he, he knows all the best taco places. You're usually way places. more high maintenance than that. I can't believe that you're eating grocery store hey. tacos. Yes. You, you heated they, up they in they the microwave, good. probably in a plastic container. She, she sure, sure as heck did. Uh, well, you, you answered one of my last questions, and that was about how the story has changed you. And that's yeah. interesting because I, I saw a story recently about how uh, there are microplastics and, and everything and, and, and Fish you know and, yeah. all, all over the place and, and the products you use and the things that I use to make my kids lunches every day and, and the bottles of water that I open I try to drink out of glass yeah. as much as I can yeah. now but I'm curious what has happened since this story first aired in April we started hearing from other ranchers that um, in Wise County and other places and actually we went back and looked and we had reporters that did stories probably up to a decade ago on this, but it was because people were smelling the uh, the, the the manure, the the, uh, the, uh, the fertilizer, bio yeah. the biosolids. They were smelling that, and it, has a so it was smell more. Yeah, oh yeah, it's very. When it's they, human. they say it stinks like nobody's business. So we did stories on that, but no one had really at that point dug in deeper to see if it was contaminating Jeez. the land until these. Horses and cows started dying in Johnson County. So this has been happening for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are, are you, are you, I remember when you and I first talked about this and, and Jason, we were all talking about doing this and trying to do it pretty quickly. And then the story kind of grew yeah. since we originally did that. But, but since this story first aired, 
uh, have you have you heard from other ranchers who've had the same situation yes. other states what yes we have heard from oh just local ranchers here and we know that there is um the network uh abc network has was very interested in this and they've actually started working on a piece involving biosolids across the state um so yeah there it's 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 taken off mm -hmm. and i Does think that it's definitely something that eventually will get regulated and i want to say that Cinegro, um which is says, the company, the that, company that, that, that makes the biosolids these, yeah. says that they have safely spread biosolids across the nation um, with no problems um, on those ranches. So we and there are thousands of people, maybe even millions that have used this product, according to them, and it has been safe. But in some levels um, that they have found, obviously, in Johnson County, Mm. they're proving that maybe that's not the case. And again, you know, it all goes back to the, the regulators and the folks who actually head out and test these things and, and how much of this is being tested here in this county, in this state, across this country. As you mentioned, it's one thing to test it, you know, here on the front end when it's in a bag or whatever it's in. It's another thing to go back out and check that soil years in after this has been used repeatedly what's going on in that soil what's going on in that grass what's going on in those animals uh it just seems like there's so much that we don't know and still. i believe that the rancher that started spreading the biosolids had done so the year before and then a year later is when i believe the animal started dying but remember it has to seep into the ground and into the well water. I mean, they found, they tested the ground in the well water of the contaminated well water. And it was uh, over 200 feet, I think, down down below the surface. That's how far. Surface. That's how no far. And they you, still found PFAS down there. And, and you mentioned Superfund sites for people who don't remember 20 years ago, maybe longer than that. Superfund sites were the federal designation for, for cleaning up uh, uh, industrial sites that had been contaminated. Victory Park. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. downtown Dallas yeah. and uptown Dallas, yeah. yes, was a super it fun was. site, which is mm -hmm. stunning to think about. Um, but when we're, when we're talking about super fun sites, are, 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 can you really scrape the land? I think like for Victory Park, they had to like scrape up two or three feet of dirt. No, this, and, this and cart it off. deep. As, I mean, I don't know can, that can it, you, you can. Can you clean at all? That's a good question because so far, as far as I know, they've yeah. not been able to do that. So my last question, since you already answered the last one, I, I thought of another one because we has a whole list every of stuff. Time. <laughs> when he said my last questions, I thought yeah, we're yeah, going to be here another not. 30 minutes. <laughs> what, what, are, what are you going to be watching for? What should we be watching for in the coming weeks? Coming I'm going to be watching to see if anybody puts forth legislation mm -hmm. to start regulating this more and seeing who else comes forward and says, I'm having the same problem. And we are planning on doing follow-up stories. This is not this. isolated. No, it's not isolated. Yeah, that's. I think that, and this is the season for filing bills here in Texas. And You and can't we, file yet, but this is the season to create them. The season yeah. for yeah. The, the ideas yeah. the, 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 to be planted. And we know that a lot of lawmakers listen to this podcast. We need to start getting them to endorse, right? Uh, we know that a lot of lawmakers listen to this podcast. We know that they've been listening in on these county commissioners meetings. Mm -hmm. We know that they've been hearing from these constituents. We know that they've seen your reports. Uh, it, this has to have been shared with them. It's been viewed a gazillion yeah. times now. This is, you know, uh, an important constituency here Absolutely. in Texas. These are kingmakers here yeah. in Texas. If you start adding them up across this state, uh, and I'm, I'm just curious, is this is this almost overwhelming when you start to look at all the threads that can still be pulled on this story? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a lot, and that's. Uh, uh, I want to give kudos to Jason Trahan, another Jason, our Jason investigative Trahan. producer who I asked to be on here, but he's all shy over there. He but, wouldn't come on the podcast. But he is um, the king of looking up investigative. Um, things and so he's he's been helping me with this and we've been keeping track of some of this and so thank god that jason is on my on our team because uh he's just a wealth of information and a lot of help on where we're going to go next with the story if if anyone's listening and you end up getting a, an email from trahan at some point it's pretty serious oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. most definitely it's pretty serious you, you flag that one you move into the top <laughs> pin it you know you respond to it <laughs> you, you figure out a way to man. respond to that no, sir, yeah. the, thank you though you know to you and to jason trahan uh, for reporting and, on this and everyone yeah. else who was involved in this because you know the light has to be shed on yeah. these things for you know it to ever get this public forum where it really starts to gain a momentum and be talked about and figure out okay what do we do next yeah you know, because this affects every one of us.
and again there are there are things that you can do to try to protect yourself a little you know a little more you know like you, like i said you know drinking water that's already filtered yeah. uh no longer nuking those yeah, tacos no, don't in nuke the your tacos in the plastic things like that that you might minimize but again it's it's in all of us and yeah. on a daily basis we're probably not consuming i mean who knows uh, such toxic levels like that obviously they're getting in the biosolids in johnson county so mm. we just we don't see the effects until it's down the yeah. road well what blows me away is the fda and the epa are still testing this stuff they're still looking yeah. into this stuff you know all of these years in you mentioned this started with the manhattan they, project when I we were known the, the i mean the dark bomb. water story happened maybe 15 years or more ago so it's they've known but we're looking into this still and still trying to answer yeah. all these questions that we don't have answers to but what is interesting is at least at the national level now uh you know with, with the biden administration they seem to be starting to move very yeah. aggressively on these chemicals the big question the big question mark still hanging out there is will texas leap in front of the rest of the country and go hey we're going to do this this or this to address this issue mm -hmm. and to and to develop regulations that make sure that everything's on the up and up with this thing that affects all of us and what i found interesting at the county commissioners meeting is that you know there's a lot of the all of the county commissioners were 100 percent saying we need to do something but there's always going to be those people in the audience that didn't believe the story they or they didn't believe what was being told to them about the investigation initially when they first got up there they were like snickering and laughing mm. but when they saw the evidence that was presented and they saw the presentation towards the end i think their mouths were just as open as the rest of us were like what what it was wow. you know, yeah. pretty shocking it was the one yeah, commissioner i think that probably got a lot of people's attention who has that real yeah. drawl and and and, and i'll go attempt ahead, it yeah go ahead oh go ahead. believe me ahead, <laughs> my very first yeah. uh resume tape by yeah. the way has, draw? it's it's missing now we'll, we'll dig <laughs> that one up yeah but uh it is it you would think i had hay in my mouth I mean, when i was talking texas city came out huh he said something along the lines of this is chernobyl mm -hmm. a nuclear meltdown you said that and yeah. that, you need to work on that a little bit <laughs> now, well i've cleaned it out uh but but that really does give you an indication you know of of, of the scope of what we're talking about yeah. here and i think it almost sounds like a movie like an aaron brockovich style movie that mm -hmm. you've got a a texas constable who is the one who went out and saw these smoking mounds of stuff yep. and started putting pieces together it almost sounds like fargo too yeah you know when, when, yeah. when you know the 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 sheriff or the police officer goes out and she starts linking up the things mm -hmm. and i mean you, you think of regulators being out there yeah. this is a constable wow. kind of putting pieces together in this jigsaw puzzle and going wait a minute yeah. something is very wrong here and that rancher too that you profiled clint i think was that he, his name yeah or? uh he uh, yes he um cried uh yes. in our interview ranchers he don't was cry easily very emotional because he said i'm i've lost everything i'm These losing everything people. he was very upset what's he gonna very. do next wait to see if he's going to have to put down the rest of his cattle Jeez. and hope that there's some some relief coming to him because honestly he can't they can't use that property now are they farming on and ranching on different property now does he move his no his and you know so a cattle? lot of the uh, and i asked him what do you typically do with this cattle and he says well i typically sell it sure. to a meat market sure. and yeah. for steak and so take it to the auction. and that you think about that you also can't cook it out of your steak yeah no more than you can take it out of your drinking water you're talking about the, the forever the chemicals PFOS, yeah Gosh, and, and this wow. is people in the in the cattle. Yeah. So we have this rancher uh, times how many more who sure. are out there in Texas and this, you know, and, and farmers, too, for that matter, you know, who are growing crops. Uh, this is their this isn't just a health concern for them. This isn't just that they're losing animals, you know, that they've put so much into. This is their livelihood. Everything. It's everything. everything. That's how they make their money. And they've been there for generations. Yeah. This ranch has been there for generations. They live at their job, too. Yeah. This is where they live. Yeah. And it's their livelihoods. Kind of like Wheeler, too. He lives at his job. God, <laughs> it feels that way more and more every day. <laughs> I know what, I do. What, 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 you do, Rebecca. You <laughs> yeah, absolutely you, you do. You know what? It. Well, yeah. I, 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 Rebecca I make, is I make Wheeler feel good that he works hard. <laughs> Lopez really works hard. Rebecca here. is working sources and taking phone calls on the weekends, even, even, all the time. Even when she is, you know, losing her Louis Vuitton uh, on the Amalfi Coast. Uh, uh, yeah, glasses on the Amalfi Coast. I mean, oh. she's, she never stops. One of my favorite people, anyway, Rebecca Lopez, <laughs> WFA senior uh, crime and justice reporter. Uh, kudos to you. Kudos to uh, investigative producer Jason Trahan for this. 
Interesting story. I didn't know anything about it, but it really is an Aaron Brockovich type of a tale. It is, and this 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 story, and I predict all of the ones that will follow, and there will be many. You're going to mm -hmm. be working on this for years. Yeah. Will win. Way to encourage her. No, her I, I, I am encouraging you because this is all of us, and this should win major awards and get huge attention and get something done because this affects every single yeah. one of us. Uh, and and so thanks for bringing the truth to light. Uh, and speaking of truth, I'll close with Why this. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> there's, there's one thing, there's one thing that has occurred in this podcast that was not true. Which and, is, uh, it, uh, yeah. Uh, I fact checking in, as we go here. I in in no way, in no way do I believe that you make your your kids lunches every day. Oh. I don't believe you, dude. Somebody else is doing that. that dude, is not if you true. were away before you for a minute, if you were awake before 11 a.m., you, you feel free to join anytime. I'll Facetime you anytime, my good man. Especially with my wife out of town, uh, I do it all the time. He did have leftover raisin canes. Okay. Today. okay yeah. yeah. But, Here's what it is. Here's what it is. Still, Let me set aside this lunchables for you. You and this no, Lunchables not for at you. All. <laughs> Listen, uh, I, I want you guys to look for this story. Go Google WFAA Chernobyl Rebecca Lopez. No, we're you, not going to make can... it that hard. We're, uh, Michael McCardle is nodding his head over there like, come on, White. Just go find it. Michael McCardle, who is our, our producer here, is, you know, we, we both know that this is going to be, this is in the description under this podcast. So <laughs> just you, click that. You don't have to go fire up your computer and go through a, an exhaustive I, search. Here's what I love about Wheeler. He, he's all concerned about, like, we're, we're putting undue stress on the listener here. When he opens 60 seconds in with <laughs> per and polyfluoroacyl substances. You can't even known say as it. PFAS. <laughs> Rebecca, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. All right, thanks.